the Tarte Tatin, a rustic French upside-down apple tart, glamorous in its simplicity and perfect in its flaws. The tatin comes in various shapes and sizes, but as long as you have the basic ingredients, the Tarte Tatin is a nosedive into a crisp afternoon in the French countryside. I mean, is there anything better than French desserts? The way they take simple, whole ingredients and then prepare them into this beautiful confection. Tarte Tatin is as classically French as it gets, but it's not as complicated as it sounds. So if you're like me and you're getting a little bit stir crazy that you can't travel anywhere, this would be the perfect thing to make at Thanksgiving because you can replace the classic apple pie and you'll give your Thanksgiving table a little bit of international flair, a little French vibe. And as always with my Cook Like a World Traveler recipes, yes, I will give you the Tarte Tatin recipe, but I will pair it with a book, movie, music, or TV show for a full cultural immersion. And in this case, I've personally curated a Spotify playlist of the best retro French music to listen to while you bake. I'll share that at the end of the video. You can travel to France through your Tarte Tatin. Okay, let's make it. This recipe is simple. All you need is four to five apples, one package of frozen puff pastry, one lemon, three-fourths of a cup of sugar, half a cup of butter, and three tablespoons of water. You could do this the traditional way, the super traditional way, which is making your own pâté brisé, which is like a, it's just a very, very basic rough dough. To be honest, it's not that hard to make it, but I thought we can make this even easier than it already is and use puff pastry as a workaround. But first, peel all the apples. I think I'm gonna do it all in one. Now the story of the Tarte Tatin differs depending on who you talk to, but the gist of it goes like this. In the late 1880s, the Tatin sisters, who ran a hotel in a little town south of Orléans, accidentally invented the rustic tart. One of the sisters overcooked some apples, supposedly being made for a more classic fruit tart. And in a hasty decision, she plopped the pastry crust over the apples and flipped it upside down. Word of this new upside-down tart eventually made it all the way to Paris, and soon the tart tatin became cemented in French cuisine. So in the very, very traditional tart tatin recipe, you would actually leave the apples just like this, kind of rough cut, very large apple quarters. But for this recipe, because I very much enjoy creating patterns and designs and I like eating first with my eyes, we're actually gonna slice these into thinner strips because as you will soon see, we're gonna layer them in a beautiful swirling pattern in the pan. So slice each apple quarter into small and even slices. I've actually called for more apples than you'll end up using in this recipe because you'll need to be able to pick and choose the slices that are closest in size and shape. You can use the leftover apples in things like oatmeal and pancakes or just eat them like this. It does not matter whatsoever if these apples start to brown after you've cut them, because we're gonna bake them and they're gonna turn a lovely golden amber brown anyway. And we're gonna sprinkle them just a little bit with lemon juice just to kind of preserve the color. In that time that we were working on the apples, yes, the puff pastry should have got nice and room temperature. This puff pastry is perfect and I use it all the time. And it's great because it comes out beautifully every single time you use it. And you don't have to feel guilty for using it because chefs all around the world use it all the time. Get a nine inch cake pan. Use the cake pan to cut a circle from the pastry. And we're gonna lay this over the apples a little bit later. Time to rummage around for a stovetop pan, which I know is in here somewhere. And now we make the caramelized sugar. To the pan, we're adding three-fourths of a cup of sugar and three tablespoons of water. That's it. I told you this was an easy recipe. Over medium heat, slowly mix the sugar and the water together. You don't want to walk away from this at any point. Sugar burns very, very quickly. Now pay attention to how the color changes. It'll go from a pale ivory to a weedy golden color, and then finally to a rich amber. I'm looking for this to turn really, really golden just before 
crosses over into like a brown amber. It'll continue to cook and turn color in the baking dish, but we do want that depth of color. It's also a depth of flavor. It's kind of fascinating to watch. Around the time that the sugar reaches a weedy golden color, turn off the heat. Then add the butter to the pan and keep swirling it until it melts and incorporates. Then as quick as you can, but carefully, pour the caramelized sugar into the cake pan. Now in very traditional tatan recipes, you would just add the apples and the pastry to the same pan and put the whole thing in the oven. But not everyone has an oven safe pan, so I do it this way. That's my favorite part when you pour it in there because it starts to smell like caramel. Preheat the oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is where the pattern comes in. So taking our little apple slices, we're just gonna lay them one over the other. Now, we line the apples in the pan. <clears throat> Music, please. Try to pack the apples as closely together as possible. They will shrink in the oven, and you want to keep as much of this pattern as you can. But I think its start as a culinary blunder is what makes imperfections in this dish not only charming, but encouraged. All of this is to say, don't stress too much if this part doesn't come out perfect. Your caramel may have hardened in the pan already, which is totally fine. Dot the apples with a little bit more butter, then lightly drape the puff pastry over the apples. Et voila! As the heat kind of swirls around this pan, the caramels will liquefy again, and it will bake the apples in the caramel. Now I like to flip my tart tatan onto a pretty little cake dish. And this one is perfect because it has that small edge to hold in some of the juices that will come out. One, two, three. It's beautiful! Look at this! If the pattern gets a little disrupted when you flip it, just take a fork and nudge everything back into place. Serve the tart to 10 when it's still warm and fresh out of the oven. Okay, first bite. It's always the true test. Mm-hmm. The puff pastry in this works so well. It kind of takes on the caramel, it becomes almost chewy. The apples have baked to perfection and they have that like slightly burnt caramel taste, which is just so it's just the flavor of the apples. Everything else is there just to kind of enhance the apples. Gone. Okay, so you've got your tart to 10. Now I'm gonna give you something that's gonna round out this experience of France. Ready? I have personally curated a Spotify playlist of all my favorite retro French music. It's the same music that I listen to when I'm in this kitchen baking. And now you can listen to my Spotify playlist while you're baking this or really any French dish that you want to, or you can listen to it while you're serving your tart tatan. It is a classic, classic French playlist, like retro French playlist. I've got Charles Trenet, I've got Edith Piaf, Yves Montand, there's a little bit of Louis Armstrong in there. And you will get your full rounded cultural experience of France. Enjoy it all, and I will see you next time. Happy travels.